I'm going to show you how to calibrate this thing for the internal reference so you get the correct output frequency. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. So this unit, currently, it's slightly off frequency. Now, I've actually got my Rubidium plugged into the bank right now, so it's got a, a, a good time base, and I'm running it into my 1.5 gigahertz frequency counter. So I've got 1.5 gigahertz set on here. My Philips frequency counter is up there with the frequency counter showing with the Rubidium plugged in. So I'm going to change camera views and I'll show you that. So here's the Philips frequency counter. This is showing the frequency. Now this isn't Rubidium lot. This is running on, a, on its own internal oven oscillator. All right, so you can see this is about 30 or 40 hertz out at that frequency. Okay, so it's only a really small amount out. So I know that with the signal generator running off Rubidium, that's going to be an accurate output. So this is the frequency I should be trying to achieve on the HP when I'm trying to do the calibration. All right, so if I go for this frequency, that should be close enough. Although the calibration does say doing at 100 megahertz, so we'll see how we go with that. I'll probably have to change to 100 megahertz or something. So here is the frequency counter here showing the HP's actual output. This is the most resolution I can get on this unit, so it's, that's as precise as I can be. Even if I increase the gate time, it doesn't really change. This is the many, most digits I can show at once, at this frequency at least. So we can see we're about 430 hertz out on the HP output convert compared to what the Rubidium was saying. Now, an important aspect here is obviously that all this test gear has to have been warmed up. This has all been on for a couple of hours to stabilise properly and stuff like that. Although, within basically 10 minutes, all of my test gear was actually reading about this value anyway. So even though I've warmed up a couple of hours, after 10 minutes it's actually about the same. So it hasn't really drifted off either after that time. So just the initial 10 minutes and so then it's okay. Um, but it's always best to make sure you've got a bit of a soak time there to give it a chance to stabilise and stuff like that. So make sure you do that if you're doing calibrations. Leave things on for at least an hour if you can. The longer the better, basically. Now, obviously we've got to get this up to where the other one's reading. So you want to get this up by 430 hertz. So we have to turn the uh, frequency generator off. There's a little switch on the back, which I'll show you in a second. And that will we'll turn it on, power it up again, and then we'll do that calibration. So here we go. So now I've got to do is turn the power off first. You have to power it down because it's got to do it as part of the build-up sequence. So unplug power for now. So give us a bit less cables to worry about. So on the back here, there's a switch, just down here. All right, it's a multi multi-purpose switch, just there. So you have to make sure we turn one of those switches on in order to turn on time-based adjustment. There we go. It's a close-up view of the switch. So what we've got to do, you can see, is the time-based adjustment here is is the left one. Now down is off, up is on. So we have to do here is going and flick that upwards like that. That is now in time based adjustment mode. So now we can plug the power back in again, flip around, and we'll start doing the calibration work. Now I may need to adjust my frequency counter to be on the lower range, so that's in 100 megahertz range, because that's what the calibration is supposed to be based around. But we'll see what comes up on the split. But it's basically, turn it on and follow the instructions on screen. Now I've done this once before on a H647A, which is basically the same unit, just different frequency ranges. So let's see what happens. So it's going to do a self-test first. There you go, time to adjust. RF on for plus 10 dBm RF output. Okay, so my counter can handle that. Now I'm going to, I thought I'd change this lead over now to the other zone, to the uh, 100 megahertz section of the counter, because that's probably where it's going to be anyway. So we'll change it over now, get that ready. So that's ready to go. And that also has a higher input to threshold than the other one. So RF on. Okay, there we go. Set in time base. So I should try and tune the frequency counter to 100 megahertz. So I'm currently showing 99.9999971. That's my current frequency on the counter. I'm going to show you that now. As you can see, I've got to do um, fine and coarse adjustments. That's fine adjustment, this is coarse adjustment. So I'll just show you what I'll do here. So if I turn this knob here, see the fine adjustments changing slightly. Just there, that value is changing. Okay. And this, the coarse adjustment is currently 123. If I increase that one, it changes it as well. 
Okay, so I think I need to do course first, and then maybe I'll do fine afterwards. Um, with this particular thing, so I've got really high resolution on my counter, so I can actually get really precise on there. Okay, so I'll just get a little bit closer with these, and then I'll go into the counter, and I'll change the camera view and show you that. Okay, so you can see the counter there. Now the gate time is currently, I think, it's about six seconds or so, which should give me reasonable resolution, six point four seconds. So let me set the course resolution without being too inaccurate. And then what I'll do is I'll probably increase the gate time further and try and move the display over one decimal place, which will give me the ability to do the spine resolution. Okay, so it's increases. I'll actually put these settings back down a little bit on the on the generator to start again to show you the meter. Okay, so it's look. So I'm doing the course adjustment now. I set by three, and it'll take a gate a couple of times to actually update. So it might need like 12 seconds or so for that to get the accurate reading. There we go. That's pretty close. Let's go. Um, now I forget my. This is out very slightly, All right? So um, really, I should have the rubidium plugged into this counter, but I know it's out by a very small amount. In this case, it's going to be basically bang on. We go one more on the course. We'll see how that goes. It might be too much. I might have to go to the fine. Yes, yeah, too much. Okay, so. Go back down to 126 on the course now. It'll be, be the next update frequency. That's why six seconds. There we go. Right, and then we'll do the course, uh, the fine. Sorry. Or maybe I could turn the fine down and then do a larger course. I'm not sure. I'll we'll go up by six on the fine. We'll see how it does. You see, it's a very fine adjustment. Wait for the next gate time. Still the same, so yeah, okay. We'll go up by 10, so that's 170 on fine now. Wait for this gate. So that's pretty close. All right, um, maybe another five. We'll see how that goes. One more gate, come on. Here we go. So it hasn't really changed there with five. All right. So what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to plug my rubidium into this counter, even though I know it's pretty accurate anyway. But um, I want to obviously get this exactly right since this fine adjustment is so fine. Um, I'm going to plug the rubidium in and then I'll come back and we'll carry on and then we know we should be getting exactly the right readings on there. All right, this is with the rubidium plugged in now. And as you can see, I'm actually going to overshoot. overshot very slightly there. I can say it'd be great. Um, so I'm going to bring this back down slightly on the fine. I'm actually tempted to wind the fine down and bring the course up instead to try and get this right. So I might actually bring the fine down by say, I don't know, 100. So I want about 70 on the fine. Bring the course up by one, and we'll see how that goes. I don't like to be too far at the end, end of a range. It might be 255 maximum or something. I haven't tried. Wait for this gate time. Yeah, so that's slightly better on it. Okay, so it's now 95 there. So if I do 100 on the fine now, that should be a bit closer. Have to wait for next gate time. There we go, look at that, bang on. Now, I want to increase the resolution of this, and now I should be able to adjust this time here and get an even greater resolution. So let's try that. 18 second gate time, we'll see how that goes. It's a bit of wobbly camera, it's on a tripod on my carpet here and it wobbles a little bit because of that. I'm moving around. Which is not much I can do about that. So it's still there. Right. Now what I'm actually likely to do is um, chuck this onto like a gigahertz range or something like that. With my things account with the rubidium still on it. And change this, this output to be in like 1.5 gigahertz as I started out with originally and then I can fine tune on that higher frequency instead All right, so I might just go in and out of the calibration a few times just to get that as good as I can right now I'm just waiting for the gate time to go off again you can't see the LED very well because of the lighting I'm afraid but if I turn the lights off it goes a bit grainy so I'm just waiting for it to go off should be any second now there we go, gate times went off, hasn't changed. So let's go slightly higher. 
and um, I won't bother recording anymore, you get the idea. But um, that has now got a course of 127 and a fine of 103. Oh, no, I've gone too far. Gone too far, those shot. So make it a fine of 100 then. I think 100 was pretty close. Make it 101. Fine of 101. Um, although, of course, me changing the frequency might be causing the gate to get an incorrect pulse, get a slight frequency twitch. So, I've got it on 101 right now. There we go, it's really close there. So, what we're we measuring down to is 100 megahertz, kilohertz, so it's 1 hertz resolution we've got right there. 1 hertz. Which is not bad, I suppose. Maybe we'll wait for more gate time. Like I said, it's not easy to see the gate flicker because of the lighting I've got here. There you go, that's looking really close there, isn't it? It might be a fraction high, but I think I might just leave it there and I'll get a calibration mode and we'll chuck a 1.5 gigahertz signal out of it and see what the counter says. Okay, so now we've done the adjustment, we need to save the adjustment. Okay, so that's the next thing we have to do. So you can see we've got 127 on course, 101 on fine. So it's fairly well balanced. I'm just watching the frequency counter now just to make sure the next update gating is okay. I think it probably will be. Um, we say it's within one hertz there at least. So, but if we go to one gigahertz, it could be one hertz difference, could be 10 hertz and it'll show up a lot more on the counter. I, I don't know, it may not matter actually. We know we're really close at 101 there. So, counter hasn't changed, I'm still saying exactly 100 megahertz. So, I'm going to say this setup. Now, what we have to do now is push the save button just here. Okay? Sav, push that. That is now saved. So adjust time base switch to off. Now it doesn't say you have to turn the unit back off again on the screen. I think you probably would have to turn the power switch back off again first, then turn that switch off. Let me quickly go and look at the manual. Let's verify that. Okay, so the manual says to turn the power switch off and then reset the switch on the back, back to its original position. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow the manual. I think this is just a prompt to make sure you don't forget to do it, really. Okay, so I'll turn it off. Flick around. And there's a switch. Well, I've lost a foot off the back. Must be in my other bench. And you get the switch, put it back down again, like that, back to the off position. As you can see, so it's back to where it was. And then we shall plug it back in the power. and test it at high frequency on my counter and see what the drift is out on it. I don't think it's going to be much really. So it's still showing one off megahertz, uh, sorry one off gigahertz on the output there. So I'm going to change the input onto my counter. Switch it over, reduce the gate time a little bit because I don't want it to take too long. And I'll just change the camera view and we'll have a look. And there we go, we have an output here. Obviously the HP is now turned on and we're getting exactly 1.5 gigahertz and that's with a gate time of 9.6 seconds so that's all good it's definitely working the way I want it to so I'm happy with that calibration we know it's 1.5 gigahertz it's definitely now bang on based on cross reference against the rubidium obviously this is only be doing um, tens of hertz in resolution but that's fine if I increase this to 2 gigahertz I don't know if this counter can read, read it or not and I can go above 1.5 so we'll try going to higher frequency and let's see if we can actually um, get any more. Let's go 1.7. See if we can read that. And we'll just go a bit higher. Let's see if we can actually get it. See if we can actually um, see it or not on this counter. It might be able to. Let's wait for the next gate time. See if it comes up or not. It may not be able to go that high. No, I can't. So it's at 1.6 there. But we can see it's basically bang on anyway, you know, so it's, um, I'm, I'm pretty confident about it. There we go, 1.6. So it's just, you know, it's basically as high as most counter can go. So it's all right, you know, bang. Can't get much better than that. Um, well, at least not with the resolution I've got on this counter. I do have another counter. It's a 18 gigahertz HP counter. Oh, I can't remember the model numbers now. 5342 or something like that, I think it is. Uh, that's 18 gigahertz, that's like 10 digits or something. So I could actually get that out and hook that up.
but again, I need to hook into Rubidium and that sort of stuff and get it warmed up properly and, and what have you. So I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to wait for another hour for that. But I'm happy with this output here. I think this is going to be good enough. I don't think it really needs much more precision than this. So we're all good. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Um, share the video if you want people to know how to do this calibration. That's pretty straightforward anyway. Um, but people may find that helpful. So I share the video around. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and all that sort of good stuff. If you're also interested in becoming a Patreon to the channel, help support me to buy items such as test equipment to repair, such as this unit here. Well, I did repair this counter when I got it, had a fault. So I've also repaired this thing as well. So this has also been something I've fixed. So make sure that if you're interested in chest equipment repairs, that you subscribe because I do do a lot of this kind of work. I buy items which are broken and repair them. So if the first time you come across my channel, when it's, it's the first time you see me working on something, then make sure you subscribe because you likely see other things that you want to watch. Okay, so thanks a lot. Catch you later, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.